the big thing. This is my preferred setup, and I'm going to explain why. Internal, internal, or external on the bow, it doesn't bother me because the di I'm looking for this relationship of the receiver and the transducer, the distance here versus, and the distance here is very close as far as a, a circle from it. And I'll show you when we get on top. If we look at the receiver here, here's my transducer. If I had a shoot through transducer, it's probably going to be in this area here. I'm within probably a two to three foot circle here, maybe less. Same thing at the bow to the transducer here. If I mark a waypoint, if I take that side imaging and we talked about we can go over here and mark over the side and it's going to add that distance to it, it's going to be referenced from that distance there. That distance there is going to set that waypoint. Now I want to go with the trolling motor and get back on that waypoint. This waypoint, I can take, if I put that receiver exactly in that position when I come back, that, that train, those two are going to be at the exact location on top of each other. The thing is, is if you've got a receiver here, you're increasing this circle for a chance of adding error. The okay. boat's traveling this way, you mark it from here to here, it's still going to be that same reference, but if you bring the boat in from this direction to here, you're at the same point. My transducer is setting here versus here. So your waypoint can be off by that. You can add offset of this distance from here to here. If you understand that, that's not a problem. Yes? So if your units are linked together, where do you recommend that you put the puck at? I, these are linked together. <laughs> What's that? These two are linked together. And you're still using two? This one, this receiver is hooked to this unit. That receiver is hooked to that unit. All I'm doing is sharing GPS waypoints between them. I hit mark at my console, it marks from that location. I hit mark it from this unit, the same waypoint, it marks it from that receiver. Oh, okay. This is a 20 foot boat. That's, this waypoint is going to be 20 foot behind that waypoint as far as distance. If I mark it at the exact same time, I hit the button in that position, this one's going to be 20 foot back and probably whatever the distance from here to this stop. It's going to be way more here here. But the thing is, is if you wanted to get that boat back on top of this waypoint, marking the closer you can have this relationship here, the more precision you're going to have in your waypoint. Now, some people say I only want one receipt. Some guys will just put it here. If the boat's traveling here, they're using this boat. You know this distance as you're creating that waypoint. The precision is getting back on it here. This relationship, you're, you're typically, if you're going to come back to Waypoint, you're probably not going to drive with the console to fish it. You're going to, you're going to come back and you're going to be on the trolling motor and you find a brush pile to go fish. So, the, the most critical ones here, your, your example, understanding this, you could add seven, eight foot maybe. The big thing is your boat spins around in a circle, the transducer, the weight, this stayed in the same spot, the transducer could be in that big circle and still be the, that exact same waypoint location. Right. Is the, is the, right. Because of coming back from different directions. It gets into basically, this is a representation of what's happening. With the waypoint, with the receiver on the back corner, any direction we come in, we're at the same spot. Now this is an example of, this is an over-exaggeration. If we had it at the console, the waypoint, the receiver here, our, way, our, our relationship of that transducer is going to be farther away from that, could, could possibly be farther away depending on the accuracy of getting exactly back on it. Now, can you make a cast within a six inch circle every time? Is, is three foot good enough? <laughs> 10 foot good enough from a brush pile? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like flipping. You know, a guy explained it to me, if, if you're flipping to a bush, you want to be in the bush, not 10 foot away from it. Uh, if you're using your waypoint to pinpoint a piece of structure, the closer you can have that receiver to the transducer, the better. Basically, I put it on the, that back corner because I don't want my motor blocking the chance of blocking any signal. 
it gets it far a little farther away so it can it right. can see up in the sky. This is basically what we talked about earlier, your receiver being able to move over the side imaging, we can start adding this distance out to the side to our waypoints. This is the position we're marking, not where the receivers are. And that is a this is another Hummingbird pack. We've got a pack <coughs> using the cursor to mark the waypoint, not the bubble. Okay. And, it, and it helps you. I mean, to me, if I'm close in an area, it's good enough. I mean, typically, I'm marking waypoints maybe because fish are in that area. Am I going to get back on it? If I was fishing a brush pile, yes, it would be very critical. A shell bed, yeah. Uh, but if you're if you're just marking a bank line or a point, you're going to probably fish around that point. So that accuracy isn't going to be as you're talking Lake the Ozarks fishing a dock. You're going to probably know that relationship of that waypoint to that dock, and you can probably line your boat up uh, pretty close to it. You're more important to knowing which dock to go to because you don't remember the looks of every one of them. This is basically just showing using your cursor. Here was a road bed. Actually, the, the, the boat, I stopped the screen, but I moved my cursor over on this road bed, hit a waypoint, and it shows the waypoint being graded back behind me. The boat still stays in the same position in both screenshots, but I used the cursor on the first one to create waypoint 133, marking that exact road bed on the map. You're marking, you're marking where the cursor is, not where the boat's at. You convinced me. I just got to fight my fish tape again. I, I all the time get my transducer cable up. And, I mean, it's, I look, it's like people's, I hear people, I want to put my receiver underneath my, mount it up underneath the deck. You just bought a thousand to three thousand dollar unit yeah. that's an investment to, to and you want to get the most out of it. Why would you want to skimp and put the receiver under? What I tell people before you do that, turn your GPS diagnostics view on, plug your receiver in and move it around the boat. If you can put it up under there and you like it and you get good reception, do it. I want mine to, to get the most accuracy to, because that estimated position there, the number of satellites at the different times you're there are gonna change. And the more precision you can have that away, the better, the easier it's gonna be to get exactly back on. Like this picture, there's actually a tree. Right? Where those four lines meet in your zoom box, actually your cur cursor is right there where those four met. I actually drove by this, this, this big old bass swam out of that tree. Yeah. I waited about 45 minutes, came back to that, flipped in there, it took two flips to find the tree. This was totally underneath the water, and I got my butt kicked. I didn't get it in, <laughs> but I but I seen the return and what was there. But using the GPS, that's cool though. It, uh, I mean, it, it's the it's the power of it. There's a guy at Kentucky Lake, I think it's Ben Parker, talks about uh, he took an outdoor rider out. They marked the spot on the ledge first cast. He, he said there's a fish right there on that stuff. First cast out there, hit the stuff. But it but it's. It's big. <coughs> if you need GPS that much, we've got advanced features that allows you to get hit. Anything else? This is great. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate all the help you give us on the forums, too. Well, yeah. There's places like Cabela's that uh, yeah. they, they allow us to do this great. and let us invest in programming. And sometimes it's a value added option because of. Yeah, I learned like a lot from this. Uh, I just haven't had enough time on the water with it yet. Too, yeah. so. And that's the big thing is I tell people the easiest way to learn the technology is leave the fishing rods at home for a minute. Yeah. Is to make yourself go, if you can take a day and make yourself go out there and learn how to use it, you're going to change that learning curve to a fish hunter faster yeah. if you're going out there, man, this thing don't work. Why ain't I getting it? That's probably the number one thing. I turn it on and I just don't get pictures like you. Well, uh, you're not, it's seven years of looking. I look yeah. at a screenshot, I look for those white like I don't even look at it. I mean, it's like, 
pretty structure is just kind of just like a haze to me when I'm looking for fish. I'm looking, I'm looking for those things. So if you're seeing clear areas, you might as well go someplace else. I'm basically, I'm not focusing, the only thing I'm looking at the unit is, I want those white dots, and I've trained my yeah. eyes to look for those white dots. Yeah. Versus looking, I've seen enough bridges and cars and pretty <laughs> yeah. trees that I don't need to see them. They ain't gonna, I, the only thing they, the only thing trees do is hang up baits. And I have to come by more. Doug, would you try cool. those white dots at the top right corner? Those right there, those are actually stumps. If you, if, if you look on the, the screen on here, you can, you can, see, the you can see some lines here. Yeah. But they do catch your attention. I mean, I would probably see those and start looking for the returns from it. There's actually a fish <coughs> right there, right? There's a fish, there's a shadow. But the thing is, that fish, look, there's a little tree here, but he's not on that structure as hard. Yeah. When you see something like this, you knew that was his home. I knew, I knew, actually, I knew this tree, but it was underneath the water. The, the lake was high, and I was trying. I was like, "There's always a good fish that lives on that tree when they pull current." It's right on the, the channel. Is right here. It's about 60 foot deep here, going up on the 13 foot flat when the water runs right over the top. And when the, I mean, that's part of that seasonal patterns, understanding yeah. what the fish do. But you catch one fish off of that point. There's actually a point over here with a few scattered trees, and this is the last one out on the point. What's, what's the percentage that you uh, have seen a, a big bass like that just sitting out by itself? And no structure, no, no stomp, no, no bush, no nothing. I, 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 found, I have seen a lot of big fish and not be able to catch them. I mean, uh, seeing a single fish is difficult. I mean, it's, there's some luck, it's, I mean, luck involved, but understanding where they should be. Typically a big fish like that is a whole body. They don't, they don't swim around all over the place. They move from, they move from a summer spot to a spawning spot right back. And it's not a very long distance. But, uh, the big thing is uh, scanning areas. Similar, like, like I've scanned a tremendous amount of areas trying to find more stuff like this. You know where that where that water bends around it. It's actually bluff in the water bends around it. I'm not. I can't find it yet. But I'm sure there's more places like it. So you can start developing patterns from it. The big thing is when you find a whole school of these things. When you see 50, 60 like that. First image on trolling motor. When you see a group like that. You can stay there all day. And tournament success, that's where that's the that's the kind of schools that they're looking for when it FLW is winning bass the bass elites. I had a friend of mine that fished Lake Guntersville last year. I think he wound up eleventh or twelfth. He they they have an off limits, three days practice, he never picked up a rock. It was a ledge fishing tournament. I mean it's a ledge fishing tournament. He found three schools in three days driving around with a side imaging unit. Oh. He said there is five baits that you throw. One was a Lucky Craft D20, DD22, Kevin Van Dam, 6XD, and I'm trying to remember the other deep crankbait, uh, Fat Free Shad, and a football head gym. Hmm. And he says, I know the color. You throw blue back, chartreuse side, you throw a shad pattern. Most of his were all brim. The only reason he did not make the top ten was on day there's four day three days. On day two, he made the third day, didn't make the final cut. On the second day, there was two locals in an aluminum boat fishing with live brim on his rod. Uh, they he said they were wearing them out and he only had like seventeen oh pounds. <laughs> three he had three days and just missed sixty pounds on And never picked a rod up in practice. So I mean, that's the poten that's the potential of those guys. They know what to use. It's finding the fish and finding the schools. He said he said he wished he had a camera card because it was the most amazing thing of seeing all those big fish yeah. stacked up. Thank you.